What's up, Watershed? We are in week four, our final week of this series we've been doing called Sacred Heart. So if this is your first time joining us, let me quickly recap for you what you've missed. And So in week one, when we were all together in the hangar, it seems like a year ago, Jeff kicked us off by reading Psalm 1 and Psalm 2. And he challenged us with, with the question, what is it and where is it that you are being planted? Uh, meaning, are, are you planting yourself in the Word or in something else? Then in week two, we read Psalm 19 and Psalm 46. Uh, we, we read these psalms that encouraged us to meditate on His Word and to focus on the truth that in Jesus we have victory. And last week we read Psalm 13 where David cries out to God. And I encouraged you to do the same, to cry out to God, but to remember the truth that with Jesus everything is okay. And with Jesus, you're saved. So today, week four, we're going to read Psalm 139. It's this beautiful psalm that David wrote that's extremely personal. And in it, David uh, points us to three of, of the incommunicable attributes of God, uh, meaning attributes of God that are distinct to Him and to Him alone. And from there, we're going to tie it back to our lives and, and talk about what it means for us. So let's jump in. This is Psalm 139, starting in verse 1. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I could count them, they are more than the sand. I awake, and I am still with you. O that you would slay the wicked, O God! O men of blood, depart from me! They speak against you with malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with complete hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any grievous way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. David, in a beautiful and powerful and personal way, points us to three attributes of God. The first one is, is the truth that God is omniscient, meaning he's all-knowing. Look at verse 1 and 2. David writes, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down, when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. What does that mean for, for you and for me? Plain and simple, it means that just like God knows David, he knows you too. He knows everything about you. He knows every thought you have had and you're going to have. He knows what you're going to say before you say it. He knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows that you don't like mushrooms on your pizza, that you hate chemistry but secretly love poetry. He knows everything about you. The second uh, attribute that David points us to in this psalm is that he is omnipresent, meaning he is ever-present. Uh, look at what it says in, in verse 7, verse 8. 
Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. Because he is omnipresent, because he is ever present, he is everywhere. And he has been, is, and always will be. So for you and me, what does that mean? It means that he is with us now. When you don't think he is there, he is. And if you are a follower of Christ, if you are a believer, not only is he there, but the Holy Spirit is with you. He resides in you. So God knows you. He is with you. The third attribute is that he's omnipotent, meaning that he's all-powerful. I love verse 11. Uh, verse 11 and 12, David writes, If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. And then later, he talks about how God will slay the enemy. God is so powerful that darkness is not dark. His light is so powerful that it covers the darkness. He is so powerful that he has conquered the enemy. So for you and for me, our our takeaway is that if he is powerful enough to conquer those things, God is powerful enough to conquer whatever it is that's going on in your life. He's powerful enough to conquer COVID-19. He's powerful enough to conquer our struggles, our pains. He is all-knowing. He's ever-present. He's all-powerful. So what's that mean for us? What's our takeaway? Well, before I tell you that, let me tell you a story. Uh, me and Hope's first date, uh, which I call my first date, she, she would tell you it wasn't. We, we met at a coffee shop, and I got there 15 minutes early so I could you know, set the stage. She got there 30 minutes earlier. I showed up looking dapper, not wearing my snooks. Uh, she showed up wearing gray sweatpants and a hoodie, and she never looked be- more beautiful. And I can look back now, and I can see if I'm being honest, that she was trying to friend zone me, but me uh, being as persistent as I am, or, or maybe just because I'm dumb, I didn't realize it then. And I began to knock down walls, both metaphorical walls as well as the wall of chemistry books she had put up before us. And, and we talked for two hours in that coffee shop, and we got to know each other, and, and we laughed together. And then the coffee shop closed, and we, I walked her to her car in the parking lot, and we talked for two more hours. 13 years later, we're still getting to know each other. Hope has seen me at my best. She has seen me at my worst. She has seen me laugh and smile and she's seen me cry. There's no one who knows me better than she does. And I can honestly say that she loves me more today than she did yesterday. And I love her more than that. You see, for God, He knows everything about you. He is in control of everything around us. He's in control of where you're going to go to college one day. He's in control of where you're going to work one day. He's in control of of who you're going to marry. He's in control. He's all-knowing. He's all-powerful. He's ever-present. He's with us. And as incredible as those things are, as as mind-blowing as those attributes are, those truths are, the most insane thing about God is that He loves you. He is so crazy about you. He loves knowing everything about you. He loves being there for you. He loves walking alongside you every step of the way. And you may think that you are undeserving of His love, but God thinks that you deserve everything. So he gave up everything. He sent his son to live amongst us, to die for us, to be resurrected so that we can hang out with God, praising him for eternity. He's crazy about you. He loves you. And because of how much he loves us, because of those other attributes we talked about, there's one truth, my one point for this message. is that God is worthy of all our praise. He is worthy of all of our praise. Anything else that we're praising, anything else that we worship, 
that is not God is it's just wasted. We're worshiping in vain because God is the only one who's worthy to be praised. Because he knows us and loves us and is crazy about us, we should, we should drop down our knees and, and praise him every day. We should give him all the glory. We should be constantly amazed by God and, and, and what he does for us and around us. But the truth is this, if we can be honest with ourselves for a second, is we, we don't. We've been too busy. We haven't had time. Amongst the craziness of life today and thinking about the COVID-19 situation that we're in, I do think there's a blessing, a gift. We've been given time. In this chaos, we now have time. In the hour that you would spend at soccer practice or play practice, let me encourage you, go to God. In, in the time where you would hang out with your friends or hang out with your boyfriend or with your girlfriend, hang out with God. In that time that you would spend on social media, okay, you could still hang out on social media, but maybe do that less and hang out with God. How, how are you going to do that? Pray. Spend some time praying to God, thanking Him for the incredible things, thanking Him for the fact that He loves you, thanking Him for Jesus, praying protection for your family, for your friends, joining the church as we pray for God to rid this world of COVID-19. How can you spend time with God? Well, worship Him. Listen to songs that declare truths about God. Listen to songs that encourage you to, to think about how much He loves you and how worthy He is to be loved. Spend time meditating on the Word. Spend time reading the Psalms over and over again and see and hear about how much He loves you. So my encouragement is, is to spend time with God. Today, tomorrow, spend an hour, spend 30 minutes. Be with God. So let's, let's do this. Let's join hands, social distancing hands. Let's join hands together and give God all the glory. Give Him all the praise because He alone is worthy. Let me pray. Father, we thank You for who You are, for the fact that You are all-knowing, that You are ever-present, that You are all-powerful, and that You love us. We thank You for who you are. We thank you for your son Jesus who you sent to be with us and to show us in person how loved we are. Father, I pray for my friends, Lord, that you would be with us now and always, that we would give you all the praise today. We love you. Amen. Love y'all.